Threw it again. On that time. Oh, there we go. Right in the chest. As you can see, the blood's like squirting out. As you can see, got a really good stab animation there. And as he goes, you can see the knife like spins as he throws it. As you can see, it hits him. He's got a, he's got a knife like right in his head there. And uh, it scores blood for a little bit before disappearing. Hello everybody, Yellow Mustang here again with another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be making Ghostface from Scream. He's going to run around um, with this knife here and stab people and also throw it. So that'll be good. So the scenario we got is uh, a Scream here. And then we got a couple of uh, figures that we're going to have him chase and uh, hunt down and murder. So that'll be good in the uh, Halloween spirit. Uh, for our starting point in our figure today, uh, we have Scream as a uh, R15 model. We have uh, default animations, uh, black shirt, black pants. Uh, scrolling down here, the only thing really different with him is uh, we have a knife in him and the actual mask itself. Uh, inside the knife, we got all the uh, the attack sounds that we're going to be doing, so let's uh, play one of them. As you can hear, dead player. Okay, so player dying, throw sound. So that's all good. So we're going to utilize all these uh, sounds as he's attacking to make it uh, better. We got blood spot uh, attachment here on the actual knife. This is where the blood is going to actually pour out from when he stabs somebody. Uh, the knife weld is just welding this to his uh, right hand there. Uh, mesh is just the, the knife mesh. And then for the mask, uh, it's pretty basic. It's just a... Uh, a part with a mesh and then it's welded to his head uh, that's the weld here and then down here is we have the actual animations for him uh, stabbing or throwing the knife and then we have a second kind of stab also so let's go ahead and uh, create the script here we'll name this script uh, we'll name this script uh, AI as normal Let's go ahead and declare our uh, local variables first off. So we'll do my human script parent wait for child humanoid and then local my torso equals script parent wait for child uh, humanoid root part. Okay, so since we're using a uh, R15 model, we're going to be using the humanoid root part. If you're using an R6 model, feel free to uh, replace humanoid root part with the actual torso. Um, we're also going to need local uh, right arm. It's going to be script.parent, wait for child, uh, right, uh, sorry, uh, mistake there. We need right hand, not arm, right hand equals script.parent, wait for child, right hand. Okay, and then we need to um, actually uh, get our knife variables in there. So we'll do local knife equals script.parent, wait for child, knife. Okay, should be good. And then um, we want the uh, blood spot, which is where the blood's going to spawn from. So local blood spot equals knife, wait for child, blood spot. Okay, and then we need to um, get variables for all the sounds that we have in the knife itself. So we need local attack sound equals knife, wait for child, attack, do local dead player sound equals knife, wait for child, Uh, dead player is what it's called in the knife and then next one's going to be dead sound equals knife wait for child dead sound then local uh, equip sound equals knife wait for child uh, equip then we will do local throw sound equals knife, wait for child throw. And then we will, for the last one, do wall hit sound. So when he throws the knife, if it misses, then it's going to play like a, uh, a, like a ricochet kind of sound. So knife, wait for child, 
a wall hit. Okay, that should be good there. And then actually let's come back up here and do one more variable for the knife. We will do um, local knife weld equals knife wait for child knife weld. Okay, so that should be good. Let's come back down here. And then we're going to go ahead and set up our uh, animations. So we'll do for the first one local downstab equals uh, script.parent wait for child downstab local uh, downstab anim equals my human load animation downstab. So preload it into the humanoid and then we'll set the priority. So downstab anim dot priority equals anim dot animation priority dot action. So that's going to be the uh, highest priority to uh, to play there. Uh, next one we'll do local stab punch script.parent wait for child stab punch then we'll do uh, local stab punch anim equals my human load animation stab punch and then we'll set the priority same thing as before so we'll do stab punch anim dot priority equals anim dot animation priority dot action next we'll do the uh, throw animation so do local throw equals script dot parent wait for child throw we'll do local throw anim my human load animation throw and then we'll set the priority again. Look, throw anim dot priority equals anim dot uh, animation priority dot action. Then uh, we want the throw charge animation. So throw charge equals script dot parent. Wait for wait for child. Throw charge. Okay. Then load that into the humanoid. Throw charge anim equals my human. Load animation. Throw charge. Then we'll set the animation priority as always. Throw charge anim dot priority equals anim dot uh, animation priority dot action. So again, same thing. Um, so now we just need a couple more variables here. So we'll do local clone equals script.parent clone. So that's to uh, keep a clone of the um, the scream guy. So when he dies, we can easily put this clone into workspace and create another version of him once the respawn timer is up. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is local attack cool equals true. So that's going to uh, be the variable if he's allowed to swing his knife or not because we're going to have a uh, cooldown every time he attacks somebody so he isn't just constantly swinging his knife. And then we'll do local pathfind fails equals zero. So um, if our pathfinding fails a certain amount of times, um, then we're just going to keep track of it in that variable. And then we'll do local charging equals false. So that's if the uh, scream actually sees the guy and is running directly at them, then this variable will be switched to true. And we're going to use that later on. So like with most AI, we need the uh, check site function. So we'll do function check site target. Let's go ahead and move this up here. Okay, so we will do uh, ray casting. So we'll do local ray, uh, ray.new. Starting position is my torso dot position. And then the direction is going to be a uh, target dot position minus uh, my torso dot position dot unit times uh, 200 in this case. So that's going to draw a ray straight to uh, whatever target that we uh, feed this check site function. And then um, we'll actually call upon the ray. So we'll do local hit position equals workspace find part on ray with ignore list. And we'll do our ray variable that we just created above. And then for the ignore list, we're going to put script.parent. 
So it will ignore all of the um, parts that are within our character when it draws the race so it doesn't hit our arms or something and then say we can't see it. So that'll take care of that. Moving on here, so we'll do um, if hit. So if um, if this ray does actually hit something, then this variable will contain something and then this if statement will be true and it'll continue. So we will return true. No, sorry. We'll do one more check. So if hit and then if the hit is descendant of our target dot parent then return hit dot true okay so basically this is saying if we hit um, any part any uh, arm leg torso head of the uh, target that we're running towards then this is going to return true and if that doesn't return true then by default we'll just return false there at the bottom uh, the next function we're going to need here is the actual uh, find target which is going to scan the workspace essentially for us and find us the best target for us to chase. So do local disk equals 300. In this case, you can change it to uh, whatever you feel is good for your game. And then we'll do local target as a placeholder equals nil. And, um, we'll do four IV and I pairs workspace get children do. So that's going to uh, get all the children in the workspace and we're going to loop through every everything basically and search for valid targets so we'll do local human equals v find first child humanoid and then we'll do local torso equals v find first child torso so that'll work for uh, older models and then for newer models we will search for uh, the humanoid root part so we'll do v find first child humanoid root part Okay, good. And then we'll go ahead and do our if statement here. So we'll do if it has a human and if it has a torso. And uh, the v.name is not equal to script.parent.name. So uh, any object that has our name, we will just skip over because we're going to assume that anything named scream in the workspace is either us or an ally of us. Um, next thing we need to check for is the actual distance. So we'll do my torso dot position minus um, the the enemy torso dot position position uh, dot magnitude is uh, less than distance. Then that will be uh, good. And then we also want to make sure that whatever we are targeting is alive. So we'll do human dot health is greater than zero. Okay. So if it's uh, within our distance and the human's health is greater than zero, then that'll be good. Uh, magnitude, if you don't know, basically just uh, finds finds the distance between two vector three values. So we give it our torso position, vector three value, and then we subtract it from the enemy torso, and that uh, calculates with the magnitude uh, function there, and that will return us a a distance, how far away we are. So that'll be good. So then we'll set the target variable to uh, torso, and then um will update the distance. So we want the next target that we find to be closer. So if we set the distance here next time it goes through this loop then the distance will be smaller and therefore it will have to be a closer target. And then um, at the bottom here we'll just go ahead and return target. And the uh, find target function is done there. Uh, next we'll go ahead and create the um, find not find target, uh, function path to target, target. And so we'll go ahead and start our path finding here. So we'll do local path, get, uh, get service, path finding service, create path with uh, default parameters because our screen guy is a normal size. And then we'll do path, compute, async, um, starting at our torso position is going to be our starting point, and then our ending position will be the target position. That should be good. And then we will check if the, the path is successful. So we'll do path.status equals success. Then we will go ahead and continue. And we'll throw an else in here. And we'll just say path failed. We'll, f we'll fill that in later. 
So um, if it uh, if it finds a successful path, then we'll do path find fails equals zero. Or we'll reset that counter, and then we'll get our waypoints. So we'll do local waypoints equals um, path get waypoints. So that's going to give us an array of points that we need to walk through that we can loop through um, to get our our character there, and then we will actually loop through the points. So we'll do local IV and I pairs waypoints do. Yeah, I forgot the four up here. I don't need local. There we go. Okay. So for IV and pairs, waypoints do. So that's going to loop through all of our waypoints. And then we want to check and see if we um, need to jump at the waypoint. So we'll do if V if V dot action equals enum dot path waypoint action dot jump then we will have my human uh, jump. So we'll jump whenever the path needs us to. Yeah, equals true. Okay, so that should be good. And then we're gonna tell the, the human to actually move to the point. So do my human move to uh, V dot position. And V is uh, the current waypoint that we're on. So uh, pathfinding in Roblox is not 100% um, accurate a lot of the time. Uh, most of the AIs that um, I create using pathfinding get stuck like half the time and they, they sit there for a long time. So in order to combat this, we're going to run a series of checks in this function to determine if the path is accurate and we're not stuck. So we're going to do a, a large if statement here. So we're going to do if check site target and math.absolute. Uh, my torso dot position dot y minus target dot position dot y is less than 1.5 then break so uh, when we're running through this loop if we can see the target that we're heading towards the uh, the player or whatever humanoid that we see so if we have a direct line of sight to them then then we're going to check if we also are on about the same height. So math absolute is going to uh, return the difference between these two numbers and uh, turn it to positive. So if my torso dot position dot y, uh, the difference, if the difference between these two numbers is less than 1.5 and we can see the target, then we have a a direct path to them essentially then we can go ahead and break out of the pathfinding and just move straight there essentially so then we'll do else if target dot position dot magnitude target dot position minus waypoints number waypoints dot position dot magnitude is less is greater than 30 then we'll break so this is checking um it's going to check our target position versus the end waypoint position. So if the target moves away from where our path ends, like further than 30 studs away from where our path ends, then we're going to update the path and regenerate it. So we're just going to break out of this loop and go back to the main function and let it run from there. And let's put some print statements in these also so we know what's going on. So we'll do print uh, direct line of sight to target and about the same height okay and then here we can say target has moved away from the path okay and then we're gonna go ahead and do another else if statement and we'll do math.abs again uh, my torso dot position dot y minus v dot position dot y is greater than 10 then Okay, so this is essentially saying if if our torso position is too high or too low versus the waypoint that we're heading to, like greater than 10, so say we fall off a cliff or something, then this is going to this is going to break the path and generate a new path because we're not going to be able to jump that high. So if the the waypoint is way too high for us or way too low, then it's going to go ahead and break out of this path. So go ahead and say print I am too far from the waypoint height-wise. Okay, and then we'll just go ahead and break out of that loop again. And then we'll do another else if statement. And we'll do my torso dot position 
minus target dot position dot magnitude is less than 10 is yeah my bad so um not target dot position v dot position so if the waypoint that we're going towards is further than 10 studs away then it's going to be um, we're just going to regenerate the path again because we might have gotten a hit or something and got pushed away from the path so we're just going to go ahead and break out again so we'll say um, I have strayed too far from the path break okay so that should be good for that humongous if statement then we'll just do one more if statement here so we'll do if um, I being the index up there is dividable by five then we will go ahead and run this so every five waypoints that we run towards so every fifth waypoint that we run to we will go ahead and perform this check so we'll do if find target not equal to target then break so essentially what this is doing is checking to see if the target that we're heading towards is still the closest target and the most valid one. Uh, if it's not, then we're going to break out of this loop and regenerate another path towards uh, the better target. So we'll say, uh, we'll just print found better target. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to do another local variable and we'll do local timeout equals my human dot move to finished wait. Okay, so that's going to pause this loop until we get to our our uh, end point that we're moving to. That's going to put it in the local variable whether we're successful or not. So if we're not successful and we time out then we're going to get unstuck and break. So um, we haven't declared the unstuck function yet. Uh, we'll, we'll create it later. But the unstuck function is essentially just going to move us in a random direction and make us jump to try and get the humanoid uh, in a position that it can actually uh, generate a path. So if we get stuck in a, a small room or something and the path finding is, is glitching out, then we'll just walk in a random direction until we can actually generate a path. Okay, so after the, um, after the timeout function, or after the, uh, the timeout variable, oh, excuse me, after that pauses, okay, so after the... Uh, the timeout check there we will go ahead and spawn another safety precaution so we'll use spawn function um, and then we're going to do wait one in here we'll do if my torso dot position dot y is less than my human dot position dot y my human dot uh not position my human walk to point dot y then so do I'll get rid of that then we got some more stuff to add in here so we'll do and my human or uh, my torso dot position minus target dot position dot magnitude is greater than 10 so we need to be further away from we need to be further away from the actual target that we're moving towards and charging equal to false then we will print high as in we'll print uh, actually we'll print here uh, the point is higher than my character we need to jump okay and then we're going to put in here my human dot jump equals true so that will tell our character to jump and essentially what the spawn function does is it's going to run this uh, separately outside of this loop so this weight uh, right here is not going to interfere with this loop running this is going to be on its own separate script essentially so this is going to be running separately then from everything else so because I didn't want this weight to interfere with anything so I put it in the spawn function um, 
if you want to learn more about spawn then you, you have to search it yourself also look into quarantines if you're interested in in this this here um so what we're doing here is we're waiting one so we're gonna let the the human start walking to its point or whatever we're gonna wait one second and then we're gonna check and see if um our torso position is uh is less than the y position of the point we're trying to get to then we're going to need to jump so if it's too high if it's too high for us then we we need to jump essentially because sometimes the pathfinding service gets stuck and does not tell the character to jump when it needs to or it tries to jump in sequence too fast then it gets stuck this is just an additional precaution to make sure the um, character doesn't actually get stuck the next thing we check in here is the um, distance between our torso and the target position is greater than 10 so I don't want this to be triggering if we are within 10 studs of the target because it'll look weird if our guy is jumping at the target randomly for some reason so it was glitchy without this so I added it and then we're checking if charging equals false so for sprinting at um, the uh, target that we're actually um, aiming towards then this is going to prevent us from jumping because it looks kind of weird if we jump at nothing so that should cover that um, let's go ahead and fill in this else statement here now so we'll do print fail to generate paths dot 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 and <clears throat> and in here we're going to increase our fail counter so we'll do path fails equals path fails plus one and then we'll check how many path fails we have. So we'll do if path fails is greater than 10, then we will do get unstuck. That function we have not created yet. And then we will reset our fails counter back to zero again. Okay, so that should be good there. Let's go ahead and create the... Um, the uh, get unstuck function now. So we'll do function get unstuck. It's a pretty simple function here. Um, we're going to print my humanoid is stuck, attempting to get unstuck. Okay, and then we're going to do my human move, not move to, just doing move in this case. Or do vector three dot new math dot random. Negative one, one, zero, math dot random, negative one, one. Okay, so that should be good there. So my human move will tell the character to walk in a specific direction. So if the value is one or negative one, depends on what direction on the x axis he will be walking towards. And same thing with the z. Oops, got a 10 there. Go to that. Yeah, so if it's, this is just a direction value, so we only need one in there. Why does it matter? Because we can't go up or down. And then we will pause the script for one second while the guy is moving in whatever direction. Hopefully that gets us unstuck. It's kind of janky, but it works most of the time, surprisingly. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our main function here. Function main. And then we will have the while loop at the bottom here. So we'll do while wait uh, 0 0.1 do. And then we will just call main. Let's do a check up here. In the beginning, we'll do if my human dot health is less than one, then we will break out of this because we don't need any AI logic if our character is dead. So we'll just pause everything essentially, just stop the script if we die. So in the main here, we'll do local target equals find target, and we'll do if target. So if we find a target, then we will continue here else uh, we'll probably put like a walk random function in there or something so if we have a valid target then we'll do if check site target and math abs again my torso dot position dot y minus target dot position dot y is less than 1.5 so we want the uh, difference between our height and the target's height to be less than 1.5 studs in difference and we want a, a uh, clear line of sight to them then we will continue here and then we'll do or 
check site, target, and my torso, dot position, minus target, dot position, dot magnitude is less than three, then we'll continue. So, so in here, if we have a clear line of sight to the target and we're on about the same height to the target, then we can assume that we have a, a clear path. We could probably run straight there. Or if we have a clear line of sight to the target and we are within three studs of the target, then most likely we're going to be able to run directly to the target without using pathfinding. So basically this if statement is going to set us up to actually just have our, we'll just tell the screen character to run directly at whatever we are aiming for there. So we'll do um, local dist equals uh, my target my torso dot position minus target dot position dot magnitude, and then we'll do if dist is greater than three, then my human dot walk speed equals twenty, and we will chase the target. Okay, so this is going to make sure we don't continuously run to the target and push them. So when we get like within three studs, then um, after we're closer than three studs, we don't really need to be chasing the target anymore because we're essentially already there. Um, so that should be good. So this is going to stop us from pushing whatever we're trying to get to. Move all this forward there. Okay, and then back here we'll need an else. And this elf is going to uh, call our pathfinding because if we don't have a clear line of sight to the target, then uh, we're going to have to find find a way over there. So we'll say main function. We have to pathfind. Okay, so that should be good. And then we'll do my human dot walk speed equals. Um, equals 10. So we'll kind of casually jog over to wherever we are. We don't see the target, so we're not going to be sprinting, but once we see the target up here, then we will um, we will actually start, we'll have our a ghost face guy actually run full speed at the target, you know, go murder. So we'll set the walk speed to 10, and then we'll do pathfind to target, target. Okay, so that should be good. Uh, just keep that walk random there for uh, for a placeholder for now. Uh, I guess next we need to actually create the uh, chase function, which is a pretty basic function. So let's uh, create it up here and we find. So do function chase target. And we'll just set charging equals to true. My human move to target. <laughs> My bad. Move to target up position. Good. And that's all there is to the uh, chase function there. And then actually in the main we do need um, one more thing in here. We do need to set charging to false each time it it uh, loops through here. There we go. Charging goes false. Alright, let's, uh, let's go ahead and run this in the uh, workspace there and see if we get uh, any errors. Okay, as you can see, it looks like he has locked onto this figure here. And as you can see, he uh, he chases pretty good. Okay, and right there we got an error, so let's go ahead and check this out. So it's probably just a, a misspell. Yeah, missed an I in position. Okay, fix that. Let's go back into workspace, run this again. As you can see, Scream slowly takes a sweet time and works his way over to the figure. Okay, you see, as he got a direct line of sight, now he's running much faster at the figure. And uh, when he gets close, he stops. He doesn't keep pushing this guy out of the way. So uh, this looks good so far. I think the next thing we will do is actually have him use the knife and attack. So let's go ahead and start working on that. 
Okay, so the next function we're going to go ahead and create is the uh, squirt blood function. So whenever we stab the uh, target, then we're going to squirt blood uh, wherever we actually hit the guy at. So we'll do squirt blood location, and then we'll do for i equals 1, math.random, uh, minimum of 20 in this math.random, maximum of 30, do. So we'll lo loop through this. Uh, we'll create like a 20 to 30 little pieces of blood that fly out when we stab the guy. So we'll do local B for blood equals instance.new part uh, script.parent. We'll do B dot can collide equals false. B dot shape equals uh, enum dot part type dot ball and then we'll do b size equals vector three dot new we'll do math dot random in here uh, math dot random five and then divide it by ten so that's gonna generate one through five divided by ten so we get like 0 0.1 0 0.2 on the size because we want the pieces of blood to uh, be pretty small and then since there's a ball, we don't even need the next uh, size value because it just goes off of the largest size uh, input you have. The other ones will just copy, so just leave those at zero. Um, then we'll do a small array in here. So we'll do local blood colors equals array. And we'll have bright red in here for one of them. Really red as another. Uh, crimson as another. And then finally, we will have maroon in there also. So then we'll do b dot uh, brick color equals brick color dot new, and we will do uh, blood colors uh, math dot random number of blood colors. Okay, so that's number blood colors is going to count how many colors we have in here in this case it's going to be four so math.random four and then this blood colors is going to receive one through four one being bright red two being really red three being crimson or four being maroon so that's that's a simple way to choose a random color uh, between a select group of colors essentially so now we will set the velocity so we kind of want the blood to like score it out like fly. So we'll do v dot velocity equals vector three dot new uh, math dot random uh, negative thirty thirty math dot random twenty to thirty and math dot random negative thirty thirty. Okay, so that should be good. So it's gonna fly, you know, left and right from negative 30 to 30 depending on whatever direction it wants to go and then on the y I have it 20 to 30 uh, velocity so we want it to like square up in the air as if it's like shooting out uh, next thing we're gonna do is uh, set the uh, C frame of the blood to actually be in the, the proper part so we'll do C frame dot new uh, location so it's wherever we want wherever this function uh, whatever location this function gets we will go in here and then actually set the c-frame for the blood particle then we'll do game get service debris uh, add item B and we'll give it a one second delay so we don't want to clog up the workspace with a bunch of blood everywhere we'll just let it live for one second then we'll just have the game automatically delete it okay so continuing on here the next function we can finally create is the melee attack function so let's go ahead and create that now. So we do function melee attack and then uh, target and then we'll do if the attack cool is equal to true then we will allow this function to continue. So do my human move to target dot position. So then uh, uh, this is going to ensure that scream is actually facing whatever he's attacking when he swings the knife we don't want him facing the wrong way so just by telling him to move towards whatever he's attacking will ensure that he's actually facing the character uh... the next thing we're gonna do is play the uh... the attack sound okay so that should be good and then we'll do local attack equals math.random 
four. So this is um, a variable that is going to determine what animation we use because we have two. Um, one of them looks better than the other one, so I prefer to use one of them. Uh, so we'll do if attack equals one, then we will do the stab punch anim, which looks okay, but it doesn't look as good as this other one does. So most of the time we will use the other animation. So we'll do uh, down stab, down stab, anim play. Okay, so if it's one, it has a one in four chance essentially of playing the crappier animation, but uh, it'll give us some variety at least. And then we will go ahead and play the uh, the dead sound, which uh, sounds essentially like the knife is like stabbing into like somebody. And then we will do target dot parent dot humanoid take damage. Uh, just do 20 damage per stab, I guess. Don't do cr too crazy with it. And then we will call the squirt blood function that we just created. And for the location, we'll do the blood spot uh, location, and then the uh, world position. So if you remember, blood spawn is our attachment that we have inside the knife, so it spawns at like the tip of the knife. Uh, so that'll give us an accurate uh, location to actually spawn the blood. And then we will uh, check if we actually killed whatever we were attacking with that blow. So we'll do if target dot parent dot humanoid dot health is less than one now then we will play the dead player sound okay and then we'll pause in place for like 0 0.3 seconds uh, just to uh, kinda give the script a pause there and then here we will tell the uh, the script that the attack cool is now false so uh, Next time it goes to run this melee attack, it won't allow it until attack cool. The cooldown is completed. So now we'll do that spawn thing again. We'll do function wait uh, 0 0.5 uh, attack cool equals true end. Okay, so this isn't going to affect the whole script. This is going to spawn this function on its own script essentially and it's going to wait 0 0.5 seconds and then tell update this variable to uh, true. So this is how our uh, cooldown is going to work. If you want it to be a longer cooldown you can change the 0 0.5 to um, something higher 1, 2, or 3 if you want a longer delay between attacks but I found 0 0.5 is a good attacking speed for him. Okay, so now that we have melee attack and squirt blood, good. We can go back down to the uh, main function here and uh, implement the logic of the attacking. So we will go down here and we'll do uh, else if distance is is uh, greater than 5. No, if distance is less than 5, then then we can actually um, attack the target. So we'll do melee, attack, target. Okay, and that should be good. Let's go ahead and and we will run this. And you see Scream absolutely like books it to the player. And he plays the different animations every time he stabs now. And you could see the uh, blood was coming out there also. Cleans itself nicely. And as you can see, these figures are not too happy about being murdered by our boy Scream here. <laughs> oh no, you're dying, buddy. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to implement in uh, Ghost Phase here is uh, we're going to make him throw the knife if he's too far away. So let's jump back into our script. And the next function we're going to create is the, um, the range attack function. So let's go ahead and create it. Um, right below the melee uh, function. So we'll do function range attack target target if I could spell. There we go. Okay, so we'll do if attack cool equals to true then we will continue with this function and then we will immediately tell cool to be false after we get in so we don't run it too many times, and then we'll th run the uh, the throw animation there. So throw anim play, 
Okay, and then we'll wait 0 0.3. So we want the animation to run for um, a third of a second and then throw the knife because Scream has to actually uh, raise his arm and like kind of bring it forward as if you're throwing something. So it'll look more realistic. Um, then we will play the, uh, the throw uh, sound. Sound effect there. So we'll play that. And then we will... We need to actually have the knife uh, fly towards whatever we're targeting, so we're going to break that knife weld. So we're going to do knife, um, knife weld dot part one equals nil. So we are breaking the weld between the, the knife and the uh, ghost face uh, hand there. Then we're going to set the velocity of the knife to be equals to my torso dot c frame dot look vector times 200 so whatever direction we're facing we are going to throw the knife and then we're going to make the knife spin also so do knife dot rotation velocity equals vector 3 dot new uh, we'll spin it 100 on the x-axis looks pretty good and then um, we need to detect if the knife hits anything so we're going to set up an anonymous function here so we'll do We'll do touched equals knife dot touched connect function object. Okay, so that'll create us a little touched function there. And then we'll do if not object is descendant of script dot parent and object.name is not knife then okay so we make sure so we're making sure we're not hitting our hand or something or any other body part of ours and we're making sure we're not hitting like another knife if there's multiple knives in the target then we'll just ignore it and hit them anyways so now we're going to get the um, now we're going to actually uh, clone the knife so we're gonna have the knife stick but um, the, so we're going to make it look like the knife sticks into whatever it hits. So we're going to do that by cloning the knife and then like keeping that knife around for a little while to make it more realistic. So we'll do um, local clone equals knife clone. Clone.parent equals script.parent. And we'll do clone.cframe equals knife.cframe. So it's going to be in the exact same spot that our knife is at. And then we're going to weld it in place to whatever it hits. So we'll do local w equals instance new weld constraint. And the parent of that will be the uh, clone knife. And the w part 0 will be uh, clone, the clone knife. And then part 1 will be whatever we're sticking to, which will be object. So then we're going to get the uh, debris service again. And we're going to add item clone and we will let it stay in the workspace for about 10 seconds and then just have the game delete it. Uh, then we're going to bring the original knife back to our hand. So we're going to do uh, knife dot velocity equals vector 3 dot new 0 0 0 so just set this back to 0 so it's not flying anymore and then we'll do knife dot c frame equals our hand dot c frame times c frame dot new uh, zero negative zero point five negative one so this is essentially just teleporting the knife back to the uh, the guy's hand and then c frame dot angles uh, mat dot rad ninety mat dot rad one eighty and then mat dot rad uh, mat dot rad one eighty so I, I calculated all these, all this rotation and C-frame ahead of time uh, before I recorded this because I wanted to get the, the perfect position. I didn't want to waste a bunch of time. So I just wanted to, uh, I just, I just uh, messed around with it until it looked good. Okay, so once uh, the knife is back into the proper place, which is our hand, we will reestablish our weld. So we'll do part uh, one equals our hand again to uh, hold it in place. That should be good.
and then we want to detect if we hit a uh, a living thing or not. So we'll do local human equals object dot parent find first child humanoid, and then we'll do if human. So if there is a human humanoid and whatever we hit, we'll do human take damage forty. And then we will play the um, the dead sound, and that's the uh, like we're hitting something with a knife kind of sound. And then we will use that spawn function again, just so it doesn't interfere with our script here. We don't want it to pause. And when, this is going to make it look like uh, the knife is squirting blood when it hits whatever it does. So do four i equals one, uh, ten do. So we'll repeat this ten times. We'll do a 0 0.2 weight in between each time we run this, and we'll just keep calling the uh, squirt blood function uh, 10 times until the knife basically uh, disappears. So we'll do um, uh, squirt blood at clone dot blood spot dot world position. So wherever that uh, clone is sitting, wherever the clone knife is sitting, it's just going to have like blood squirting out of it essentially. And then let's see here. We need an else if somewhere in here. So if we don't hit a human, then we hit like a wall or something. So we'll do else, a uh, wall hit sound play. So that'll sound like we're hitting like a, you know, the floor or something. And then down here, at the uh, the very end here, after that, we will disconnect this function that we created. So it can only be touched once. What did, what did I call it? Touched. Uh, disconnect. So this this knife can only be touched one time. After that we're gonna disconnect it, disable this this whole script here so nothing can touch it again and not rerun this because we only want this to run one time. Okay so that should be good there. Uh, next thing down here, we're going to have the cooldown thing again. So we'll do function, uh, wait one, attack cool equals true end. So again, to reiterate, we're using spawn so we don't hold up the entire script. This is going to spawn it in its own separate script essentially. So this wait isn't going to affect... Um, Anything within this function or anything in this script is going to run it separately. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the ranged attack in our in our main function logic here. So we'll do else if else if uh, the distance is less than 50 and the distance is greater than 20, then we will range attack the target. So as we're running towards the target, we will just throw knives at it until until we're in range to stab it essentially so that should look pretty good let's go ahead and jump in and see if we made any errors while typing that if not it should be good so let's see okay so no knife throw there no knife throw there either that was weird all right so something's wrong here he's not throwing knives like he should be yeah so <clears throat> Yeah, this is my fault. Um, we need to have these in its own separate if function because this this if the distance is greater than three is also going to fall into this range. So we need to do both essentially. So we'll just separate this out. Let's run this again. There we go. He threw a knife there missed. As you can see, the knife is stuck into the ground there. It's welded. Threw it again. On that time. Oh, there we go. Right in the chest. As you can see, the blood's like squirting out. As you can see, got a really good stab animation there. And as he goes, you can see the knife like spins as he throws it. As you can see, it hits him. He's got a, he's got a knife like right in his head there. And uh, it squirts blood for a little bit before disappearing. And as you see, uh, Scream just goes to town on these figures. So uh, that's all fine and dandy. This is this is working pretty good. I think the only thing we need to do with Scream now is uh, is check uh, if he died. We'll just do a little 
little respawn script also in him. So let's go ahead and stop this, and we'll add the uh, respawn logic in him. <clears throat> yeah, so right here above main, we'll go ahead and do my human dot died connect function. And we'll just uh, wait 15 seconds in between each respawn. We'll do clone.parent equals workspace. We declared that up above when we're declaring all our variables. So uh, that should be good. And then we'll do game get service debris uh, add item uh, script.parent and with a 0 0.1 uh, delay there. So when he dies, he'll just lay on the ground for 15 seconds and then he will be taken to the clouds and a new one will spawn. So uh, that should all be good. Okay, so I think the last thing we need to do here is just create the uh, the walk random uh, function. So when he doesn't have a target, he's not just standing there doing nothing. We will. Where are we gonna create the uh, the walk random? We will create it. Create it below the uh, ranged attack. So right here, create the uh, function walk random. And always we will generate our local random x, which will be um, mat .random, uh negative 50 as minimum, maximum is 50, and then we'll do local rand z, z rand equals mat.random, negative 50, 50, and then we'll do local goal equals uh, my torso dot position plus vector 3 dot new x rand uh, 0 and then z rand. So that'll calculate uh, where we need to walk to based off of uh, where we're standing in the world. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and compute the path. So we'll do local path equals game, get service, pathfinding service, uh, create path <coughs> with uh, default parameters there. And then we will compute it. So we'll do path, compute, async. Async uh, starting position will be uh, my torso down position, ending position will be goal. And then we'll do if path.status equals to enum dot path status dot success. Then we'll do for I V and I pairs. So if we get a uh, path status success, then we will go ahead and uh, we will get our waypoints. So we'll do local waypoints equals uh, path and get waypoints. And then we will loop through those waypoints. So local IV and I pairs waypoints do if V dot action equals to uh, NM dot path path waypoint action dot jump then have our character jump as usual. Jump equals true. And then we will tell our character to actually move to the actual uh, point. So my human move to B dot position. My human dot move to finished. Wait. And then um, I guess for past status, we'll just do an else in here. Wait to. So give it a two second delay there. We'll just print a uh, random path is unsuccessful is fail whatever I'm gonna try to spell that alright so that should be good we got our walk random implemented so we will go ahead and throw that in this else so now we got all of our logic he should be fully fleshed out now let's go ahead and uh, run this and see see if everything works good as you can see chases the uh, the figures there Stabs him cleanly, plays the correct noises. As you can see, it plays the wall hit noise. If it misses, it sticks to the tree there. Hits the, hits the, uh, the figure there. Pretty funny stuff. It's bleeding. I have a headshot there. <laughs> I mean, Ghostface got some pretty good accuracy with these knives, honestly. Pretty amazing. And you see, he just, uh, just goes to town, killing these figures. Not a care in the world. Uh, let's go ahead and test the uh, the respawn logic. So we'll go ahead and kill him here. All right, boom, he's dead. Uh, we'll fast forward 15 seconds. Okay, as you can see, he respawned after about 15 seconds there, and he's on the move again. 
Alright, and so I guess that concludes the uh, Scream Murder AI tutorial thing. Uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, happy Halloween. Um, I'll see you guys next time.